It was all a dream. Before I thank everyone for this prestigious recognition, please indulge me for a short while. I have to share this story with you all. It's about a friend of mine. I met him years ago as a young boy. As it turns out, we have had so much in common. He grew up seeing his father from afar. His mother would remarry an awesome man who exhibited all the attributes of manhood, strength, and guidance. He also has siblings who have remained his biggest supporters throughout his highs and lows. We have had an on and off relationship over the years, but recently he reached out to me. He said he had a few things he wanted me to know about his life since we hadn't really had a chance to catch up. He told me that ever since he was a child, he admired my dad. He had heard about him becoming one of the first Mass and Tigers to go from playing high school straight to professional football. He researched my dad, and on top of being a Mass and Tiger legend, he learned that he played on some great teams in the NFL. That impressed him so much that he wanted to do the same things. By the time we met, he was still a small boy, and I was on my way to become a football legend. <laughs> a joke, but very true. He was a little dude who knew he could do things that other kids couldn't. Like me, he started with flag football and Maslin. Like me, he spent his second season playing midget ball against Canton kids. It forced him to adjust to being around different kids. That proved to be an invaluable life lesson, learning to work with others, getting to know people, their strengths, and opportunity areas. Like me, life took the game away from him in the seventh grade. Instead of feeling sorry for himself, he focused his competitive spirit on other things. That brought the love of the game of tennis. Like me, by the time he got to high school, he had extreme highs in sports. He excelled at QB and safety. Like me, he would suffer a devastating loss to Kent McKinley his junior year. He told me that he was there when I led Mass into victory in the 100th game against McKinley and against Fremont Ross led by future NFL Hall of Famer Charles Woodson. Like me, he really didn't understand how much that would cement my legacy, but he knew those moments were special. Like me, he would receive national recognition his senior year, go to play college football, and face adversity along the way. Some of it was due to injury. Most of it was life reminding him to grow up. Like me, he admitted to losing his way in college. He lost his opportunity to shine at Akron. But another challenge presented itself. Like me, he changed. He changed schools, environments, behaviors, and even switched positions. Like me, he excelled again. So much so that NFL teams wanted to see if he could do it on the next level. And just like me, he did. Like me, he played for the Washington Redskins and Chicago Bears. Like me, his career was cut short by injuries. Like me, he would give up football and find other ways to quench his competitive fire. Like me, he married a wonderful woman, focused on his children, and found other mountains to climb. And just like me, he found golf. I was amazed to hear his story. We had truly both lived so many highs and lows chasing my father's dreams. Even without speaking, we shared the same victories and defeats. I knew most of what he was sharing, so I just had to ask him, what did he really want to say after all this time? By this time, his head was down. He slowly raised it and looked me in the eyes. He said, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you to my father for the many gifts, especially football and for blazing a trail that even he may not have understood at the time. This man went from Maslin to professional football without ever playing college football. He was signed by the Memphis Southmen of the World Football League. They were coached by another ex-Tiger, John McVay. Despite the short-lived nature of the WFL and suffering a knee injury, 
my dad rushed for 1,369 yards and 17 touchdowns in a season and a half. My dad would join two of his World League teammates, Larry Zonka and Paul Warfield, and go to the NFL. He started by signing with the Minnesota Vikings in 1976. As fate would have it, Mr. McVay signed my father with the Giants in 77, when he was the head coach. Ironically, Mr. McVay also would be the general manager with the 49ers. My career started with a tryout with the San Francisco 49ers. It was a tryout that was arranged by their general manager. You guessed it, John McVay, my dad's former WFL and NFL coach. During the four-day camp, I was right behind Jerry Rice and Terrell Owens in all the drills. I studied them and took in their habits. When the Washington Redskins head coach Marty Schottenheimer came calling, I took those lessons with me. I was first in line during every drill. I sprinted to the end zone after every catch. Marty signed me to my first NFL contract. I would like to thank my mother for always being there for me. She gave me the gift of love, support, and strength. She has always embodied every attribute of a woman and a mother. She nurtured my strengths, challenged my poor decisions, and supported me through my entire journey. I still go to her when life makes no sense to me. I would also like to thank my stepfather, Kirk Braithwaite, for the gift of manhood. Thank you for the gift of consistency. You have always proven that manhood isn't what you win, it's how hard you work to win. To my wife, thank you for being the challenge I needed. Thank you for resisting my choices until you can make the most of them. To my family and close friends, thank you for the support. Last but not least, thank you to the city of Madison for being the handful of ice cold water on a very hot day. Sometimes it feels good in your hands, but other times you are so cold. I could feel it slipping through my fingers. Drinking too much often meant there wouldn't be any more left. But just like my father, I'm covered in masculine orange and black for life. T-I-G-E-R-S. Go Tigers.